Bicuspid aortic valve is the most common form of congenital heart disease. It affects about 1 in 100 to 2 in 100 people. It is when the leaflets of the aortic valve fuse during fetal development, where normally you have three aortic valve leaflets, and patients with bicuspid aortic valve have two. We call it bicuspid valve disease because it affects more than just your valve. It affects the last valve in the heart that kind of keeps blood moving forward to the body and prevents it from leaking back into the heart. But it also affects the aorta, or the blood vessel, above that valve the valve. It's essentially the door to letting blood flow through from the left ventricle, which is a pumping chamber of the heart, through the aorta, giving blood all the way to your brain, to your toes. It can lead to narrowing of the valve, which would prevent blood flow from exiting the heart. It can also cause leaking of the valve over time. And then also there can be associations of um, aortic enlargement or um, aortic aneurysms that can develop over time. BAV runs in families that can you know, be transmitted across generations, basically it's hereditary. You need to be able to screen for it before a child is born. A patient with BAV, their baby could be at risk for more serious heart problems that you want to diagnose before birth so you can manage them effectively. Within the bicuspid aortic valve program at Lurie Children's, we have a very rock solid screening process for patients. We're able to screen siblings who need echocardiograms and they end up seeing a member of our team in clinic, even if they have a normal echocardiogram. And then we also have a really great screening program with Northwestern where adults who need to be screened can get linked up with our bicuspid aortic valve program. We're essentially providing care to a whole family. There can be patients that have bicuspid aortic valve disease that really have minimal or no valve dysfunction or aortic enlargement. And so certainly those patients, it's screening and monitoring every couple of years and, and they don't have activity restrictions, there's not medications. And so if it's somebody who has severe valve dysfunction where they have a lot of narrowing or a lot of leakiness, and we're talking about the possibility of surgery sort of in the next few years, we spend a lot of time, not just at the time of diagnosis, but sort of throughout their care talking about needing any type of intervention and then talking them through sort of our, our treatment plan and, and thinking about um, activity restrictions and you know our goal is always to keep them as active as they possibly can and to continue to participate in all their athletics or sports as much as we can but we have to keep them safe at the same time. BAV is this kind of chronic process that in most people is going to lead to an outcome during adulthood and so you need to be able to follow a patient over the generational spectrum. In early childhood and infancy, you need to be able to make the diagnosis in children, and that takes a unique set of skills. Imaging kids, kids are not just small adults, it takes real special equipment, special protocols, whether it is continued care with our adult congenital heart disease team here at Larry Children's or across the bridge at Northwestern Medicine, whichever is best for the patient or the family, we're gonna make sure that happens. And so, Really, it's all about the comprehensive team.